Hi, and welcome back. This week, I'm going to show you how I made this honeycomb-inspired rose gold semi-naked cake. The first thing I needed to do was make some white chocolate ganache with a little bit of pink little candy melts so that it's ready for the drip when I get to that point. Now set that to the side to chill and then I'm going to go ahead and make the honeycomb. I used white candy melts, did the same thing. I used the white candy melts, melted them 30%, thir I'm sorry, 30 seconds at a shot at 50% power until it is melted through and then add some more of the pink. Since it's a rose gold that I'm going for, I need a pink background to get the more true color. Just keep adding them until you get the desired shade that you want. Now I'm going to tap this on the counter on top of a towel just to get the air bubbles out of the chocolate. Sorry, it's bouncing around a little bit. But I'm pouring it on these packing bubble paper, I guess you'd call it. It's not paper, it's packing roll. I'm not sure what the name of it is. Anyway, it will give you the impression of the honeycomb. You pour it on and then just spread it evenly. You want it thin enough so it's not too bulky, but also not too thin. You don't want to see the bubbles through the chocolate. And I'm tapping again to get rid of more air bubbles because when you put chocolate into something, a cavity of some kind with pockets in it, you can get some air bubbles. Now I had two six inch marble cakes and three eight inch, what were they? They were brown butter cakes actually. The six inch rounds I cut in half to get four layers and the eight inch actually there was hardly a dome so I didn't even need to level those. Now you've seen me fill and stack cakes a hundred times, you know that I maybe you don't know, that I dan them with a thickened buttercream and I'm using chocolate buttercream in between the layers on the six inch cake because that goes really well with a marble, I believe. Now, once you get those layered up, go ahead and pop them in the fridge so that they firm up so you can work with them without them sliding around. And I used a brown sugar buttercream in between the layers on this cake. Sorry, it was last week. I'm trying to remember what I did. <laughs> Again, dam them with a thickened buttercream and fill them. Smooth out that filling so that you eliminate any pockets, any air pockets. Those can give you trouble later. And I'm filling in between the layers just to fill in that gap with that thickened buttercream to avoid bulges later. So you'll want to chill the cake to firm it up, but then go ahead and put your buttercream on. Do a, hmm, a hefty amount, somewhat hefty amount, and then you're going to be scraping most of that off to get the semi-naked look. But if you do a hefty amount, then you kind of avoid pulling up crumbs when you're taking off the excess. So the buttercream that I put on, we're actually scraping most of it back off so that you can see the layers level out that top and pop it back in the fridge to stack them i'm using big bubble tea straws you could use wooden dowels i just like the straws i just find i just trust them more just a personal preference space them out evenly i did five straws in between and when you pull these straws up you can see where the buttercream is where it ends so you know where to cut for these smaller two-tier cakes just push them right back in add a little buttercream to help the next layer stick and as you can tell I can manhandle these tiers because I have put them in the freezer for about 10 minutes before stacking them and I'm just filling in the gap in between them now that ganache that we made earlier and has cooled a little bit so that it doesn't run too far is ready. Pop it in the bag and do your drips. You don't need to squeeze much when you do this because gravity will take care of the rest. I 
that. And now that the chocolate is cooled, I had popped it in the fridge to set up. Gently peel this wrap away. And I actually combined rose gold and some copper to color this honeycomb. I wanted it to coordinate with the drip, but I found that the rose gold could have been a little deeper in color, so I went ahead and added some copper to it. Use a big fluffy brush, and this doesn't have to be perfectly coated. It's a more rustic cake, so it's okay if it's not perfectly coated. You're not even gonna notice it when it's all put together. You could even airbrush this if you wanted to by adding some Everclear to your, color, your dust. Very thin, make it very thin, and then use your airbrush to apply it. I just wanted to dry brush this. I wasn't so concerned about all over coverage. I went ahead and did the back too. People tend to forget about the backs of the cakes, but I try to keep that in mind. Now we're just going to use a big knife to cut these into triangular shaped sections. I was going for a triangular, but you know, they don't have to be perfect. And since these edges have been cut, I went ahead and added a little bit of dust to the edges also, so you don't see a, a bunch of pink. And I added some Everclear to the rest of the dust to make it a paint that I could brush on to the, rose, the drips. This is a very tedious thing for me to do. I don't have the steadiest of hands, so this can be a challenge for me. Do a couple coats if you need to. And again, this is a more rustic type of design, so I wasn't worried about that being perfect either. And if your chocolate starts to get soft on you as you're working with it, especially in these humid temperatures in the summer months, go ahead and pop it back in the fridge for a good 10 minutes and then bring it back out again. It's easier to paint on solid chocolate than it is in chocolate that's starting to soften. And that was a problem I was running into with this cake. It was a very humid day. So there's your not so perfect, perfect <laughs> rose gold drip. Now I'm just gonna stick the pieces of chocolate randomly into the cake itself. You can just stick it in, it goes right in. It's, um, you can use a knife to score a little slit in the cake if that makes you feel better about it, you can do that, that's fine. I did add a little buttercream behind these just so that they would stay attached to the cake. Probably wasn't necessary, but I guess I, I figured it doesn't hurt. Now I could have stopped right there in hindsight. I kind of wish I had, but I wanted to add a little more color 
for some reason. That was just the mood I was in that day. Um, so I added some burgundy-ish buttercream stars with a, I think I used a 1N tip. That seems to be my favorite tip, 1M Wilton. And I did the same with a blush pink. I do kind of wish I had just left it with the drips and the honeycomb. That's right. They're both pretty. And just add some stars here or there. Whatever strikes you as a place to put it. And then I did add this, I don't even know what color this is. I mixed some colors and I just kind of kept going until I found a color that I liked. It's kind of a tealy, oh, I don't know, tealy bluish greenish color. I don't know if you can think of the name for that color, let me know. And this one I just used a round tip just for some little, little dots. I didn't want to go too crazy with that. And so that's about it, guys. So let me know what you think in the comments. And while you're at it, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you see when I upload every week. 